Hi, I'm Phil Anderson and welcome to my channel. I've been a property investor now for over 30 years and I've watched investors continue to make the same common investment mistakes. There's so many dirty tricks in the real estate industry and it's all caught up in a whole heap of sales hype. I want to cut through that sales hype and help investors avoid the common mistakes. I hope you enjoy the following content, but please remember to like and subscribe. G'day listeners and viewers across the country and welcome to another episode of Street Smart Property Investing, where we have a bit of a look behind the headlines. We uncover what's happening, you know, on the ground in the Australian property market right here, right now. Today, we've got a great topic to talk about we're gonna have a you know a real you know consider what's happening in this market that's running so hot how long is this boom going to run every week i'm joined by some of my favorite industry professionals today i've got mr gordon ruddy with me a great mate of over 30 years and mr trent durrington one of the most knowledgeable guys i know in the actual actual acquisition department of uh you know property investing around australia we'll explain a bit more of that in just a second but we've got a great topic we want to touch on today guys and i'm i'm looking forward to peeling away a few layers if you don't mind i'll start with you trent Mate, this boom, it's a broad-based boom. Um, obviously, every investor out there that's having a listen is seeing the headlines. It's it's going crazy, but we're also seeing now that Sydney and Melbourne is going crazy. The regionals have been the big performers over the last 12 months. But this boom, it is so broad-based. There are so many postcodes. I've never seen uh, a, a boom as broad as this across so many areas of Australia. Mate, what's your take on it? What are you seeing on the ground? Ah, uh, well, the boom's happening, no question. We're seeing, um, you know, 3% growth, 4% uh, growth month on month. Um, so that's setting some areas up for 50% growth within 12 months. Um, so that's unprecedented, uh, you know, numbers. Um, it has happened before, you know, in, in, if we talk about Brisbane in 2003, 4, 5, you know, that grew 66%. Um, so the market can um, increase and boom pretty quickly um, but I tend to feel that uh, this is going to be a sustained uh, run uh, for, for a few years to come um, and there's lots of layers to that um, you know we go into uh, the shortage of land the amount of house starts um, that have happened in the last or the lack of in the last 12 months typically there should be 200 to 220,000 a year that's including units there's only been a hundred Hundred thousand, so um, you know there's you know of two hundred and twenty thousand a year. There's one hundred and fifty thousand houses that should be built. So we're well below um, you know the averages. So there's catch up to be made there, but we can't catch up because land's not available to register. Um, and then you've got this um, demand building um, once the borders open, as far as the uh, international borders. Yeah, yeah, the international yeah. borders. Uh, and then you've got, um, you know, lots of... Mate, it's of all happening, right? It's all happening. Mate, yeah, every month, happening. twists, turns. Yeah. It's, it's just been yeah. a period like no other. I've been investing for, you know, over 30 years now. I know you've been heavily involved even through your baseball days. Every time you're back home from playing Major League Baseball, you're back here in Australia, you know, on the tools or in the yeah. property market. Yeah. So you've been doing a yeah. long time. But, mate, there's never been a time where... Um, as many markets are moving at the same time. We've seen, I guess, the big thing that we've observed and it comes to, um, you know, plays to our advantage at times that we know that most markets, uh, you know, nothing happens for a quite a period of time then everything happens in a fairly short period of time. We knew that the Brisbane, Greater Brisbane, South East Queensland market was due for some solid growth. Uh, of course, we're now seeing that very much in that market at the moment. I think it's probably one of the ones that's best positioned over the next two or three years to be the biggest performer. But, mate, the volume of markets that are moving, it must be just so, I, I guess, uh, confusing for investors and obviously incredibly hard for investors to get into the market. Well, it, it, well the, the, it, this boom is driven by the owner-occupier. Mm -hmm. So... Um Although investors are coming back into the market, it, it's uh, they can't get in right now. So um, that's going to start to increase. Um, but don't be mistaken, this property boom is driven by the owner-occupiers. Mm. Just so on that topic before you go on, mate, the big thing that I'm picking up out of that is, you know, any investor that's trying to enter an existing property, buy an existing property they are really up against emotion. You know what I mean? An investor that does it by the numbers, as we should, 
those home buyers, those those people buying a family home, they're not using that rule book. They're using a totally different rule book. They're prepared to pay whatever they need to pay to buy one of those existing homes. And if you get into that tug of war, you're never going to win that arm wrestle. That's that's yeah, yeah. that's something to steer clear of. And that's what we're seeing on the ground. Existing housing it's to the locals in the areas, they think that a property that's listed at 700000 or whatever it is, they think, wow, they're asking a lot for that. But then they're surprised to learn that it's only on the market for a few days and it sells for 800000 It's just these buyers floating out of Sydney and Melbourne and they're just, you know, whatever it takes to get a property and that's what they need to do to get a property – Mate, it's uh, it's those home buyers, mate. It's a yep. hard market to go after if you're an investor. It's a hard market to compete with. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's right. So from an investor standpoint, it's still a fantastic position to get motivated and and uh, and start some action. Of course, if you're ready. Um, but there's some opportunities as small and far <laughs> and hard. You know, mate. um, you know, I'm working extremely hard to secure uh, properties in in the right markets and uh, when they come up they don't last you know action's got to be taken but um well mate I, just on that side of things you've been an acquisition specialist for probably a couple of decades now right now in the in the scope of that vast experience you've got across mate i'd hate to think how many postcodes and how many relationships you have like you're one of the kings of relationships you 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 know all the key guys you know the land developers you know the major builders you can pick up the phone and get access to a big range of people that are you know highly needed in a tight market like this but even you're finding it hard yeah i am i am but um luckily what, what, for, they've luckily, got no chance yeah, a pro- investor yeah, on their yeah, own's got no 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 very little chance no, that's right so luckily at the you know we've got clients lined up that uh once i get a call um and i get a, a friendly that gives you know knows that I can move pretty quick with our investors. Um, they're giving us giving us an opportunity for 24, 48 hours. And, uh, <laughs> and that's it, right? If they give us 48 hours, you think, wow, that's a long time in this market. That's right. That's right. But, um, you know, so luckily over those, I guess, the, the many years of um, uh, we've – I've done the right thing by the developers and builders and know that we'll perform. But so it's creating some opportunities for uh, our investors to get into some quality – top properties as, and uh, owner occupier estate. Oh, mate, the opportunity is huge. The opportunity, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I've never seen a better uh, window of opportunity yeah. if you can get the properties. Yeah. And yeah. I just, like I said, unless you've got that team, unless yeah. you're working and linking arms, I just, yeah. I, I worry for investors, they're going to find themselves really trapped on yeah. the sidelines. Yeah. Let me come back to you, though, on yeah. a couple of other topics. Let me talk to Gordy. How are you, Gordy? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, mate, you're never bad. Never, Always good. Never. Hey, mate, you're working with investors every single day. So you're seeing a lot from, um, you know, the perspective of how investors are, you know, handling these market yep. conditions. What are you seeing? What are your thoughts? What advice have you got there? Uh, advice i got is it's not a time to, you know, to sit on your hands and do nothing as an investor, but it's certainly not a time to get emotional and rush out and, and just purchase something because you know, you feel you need to purchase something. It's really important at this time to, you know, to 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 get a really great team around you, which is, you know, what, what we do. I can't know. imagine doing it on your own anymore. We used to do it on yeah. our own 20 years ago. Yeah. And everyone that I know that's built a quality, significant portfolio have done so because they've surrounded themselves with a little mm. team of people that can help them where they're not so strong in certain areas. It takes a team these days. And it's more important these days to do that because, you know, whilst we've got such a great, um, you know, environment with low interest rates, we've got, you know, just, well, basically no vacancy rates. It's crazy. And, um, you know, and, and the yields are fantastic. Nearly any property you buy if you pay too much could look good on paper at the moment but we've got to understand that you know everything is cyclic and we've got to think ahead so we want to make sure Sure. that right at the moment you know a a great investment for you should be putting hundreds of dollars a week in your pocket and that's based on a hundred percent finance yeah based a hundred percent finance so don't get you know don't get caught up in oh you know this isn't going to cost me anything because a little little change in the market could turn that around to costing you 200 Sure. You know, we, we want a, a change in the market to mean, well, uh, we're only getting $20 a week cash flow positive or it's neutral, but it's cost, it, in, into the future, this property is not going to change our lifestyles. We're going to take it away. It's not going to feel like we've, you know, we've, we've put a, you know, a millstone around our neck. We want to, um, 
and I feel like this is forever adding to our that's a good point. It's a, it is a good point because, like you said, interest rates being so low, rents are getting pushed up, you know, vacancy rates are so tight that there's so much comfort uh, for investors stepping into the market. It's probably the lowest risk uh, time I've ever mm. seen to enter the property market. And people are kind of desperate. Some people have got this fear of missing out, so they're jumping in and buying whatever they can. And, of course, even when they buy most stock, it looks okay because interest mm. rates are low. But like you said, mate, somewhere in the future, even if it's five, six, seven years down the track, interest rates may have climbed up a bit. And then you want to make sure that you've purchased the best you can today so that you're always going to be cash flow positive 100%. in the future. Mm. So it's a good point. Yeah. And, and, mate, we are seeing it. I, I'm blown away with some of the numbers that you've been showing me where people are paying, um, you know, uh, for great quality properties in, in markets that we're excited about, in postcodes that we know have got great growth potential um, and, and uh, you know, based on 100% finance, all of the purchase costs, rates, insurances, property management fees, everything, we're seeing numbers between, well, 200 plus a week in, in some cases mm -hmm. and you know, and obviously a lot of investors, once they know that's possible, they go, well, let's try to do that in every case. Let's mm. chase those sorts of numbers. But, mate, they've never seen numbers like that. No, no. And, you know, the, those numbers are there, but some people could get so emotional about something that today, well, it's cash flow neutral today, and they get excited about that. But, you know, that's in this market, cash flow neutral wouldn't be what I'm what I'm aiming for. No, no. I'll be definitely looking to, you know, to be getting somewhere between, you know, $120 to $150 a week or $200 a week cash flow positive. And what that's doing for investors today is giving them a big head start on their on their principal place of residence, the loan that they've got on that. I know we've mentioned it before, but for viewers who haven't, you know, caught that, you know, by, by making the right investment property decision today, you could save 10, 11 years off your home loan and a quarter of a million dollars just on your home loan. Yeah, without making life any harder, you're actually making Make life easier. 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 Um, yeah, but re-diverting that extra cash flow mm. into, into getting rid of any of the personal debt that you're yeah, also carrying. Exactly. Mm. You look, I did have a talk with an investor, you know, only a few days ago that was describing a great property he was buying and the cash flow on it. And when I pulled it apart, he was using a deposit to create yeah. that scenario. Now, of course, you know, if you've got equity in a house and what you're working with a lot of investors at the moment using super funds and a whole range of, uh, you know, their tax and so forth, not that it's easy to, to work with that at the moment because mm -hmm. the cash flow is so positive, but your philosophy is always to make life as easy as possible but, but build wealth towards exactly. retirement, yeah. you know. So, mate, look, it's, it's, it is an exciting time. And like you said, it is uh, certainly, um, you know, optimal to be pursuing how to get into the market. But your core message would be not to, you know, uh, not to be so desperate to get into the market that you don't stop and work out your strategy first, get your cash flow, you know, your strategy and what you're targeting really identified up front. Yeah, the strategy is so important. Working out, first of all, well, you know, why are you buying the investment property? What, why, do you, why do you feel you need to buy one once you've, you know, you've made what that decision is? Then, you know, target, you know, something that's really, you just mentioned it, to make our life better today. We've got that opportunity. Well, mate, it is a great opportunity, but the topic of the day is how long is this thing going to run, right? We know it's going crazy. We know this boom is on. We know that we're hearing from, you know, the ANZ has just readjusted their forecast for the year. They were talking a 7% growth figure nationally. Now, that's nationally, so there are markets that are going to perform well above that, while other markets won't perform, you know, that well. Mm. But they were forecasting 7%. They've just revised that forecast up to 17%. Wow. So they're talking 17%, and they're some of the more conservative analysts that I know of. Mm. Uh, the um, uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, you know, they've come out and, and uh, kind of confirmed that they believe that we're going to see a 30% growth over the next couple of years. They've also confirmed that they don't see the need to move interest rates, which is kind of comforting, given the fact that Sydney and Melbourne are annoying me a little bit that they're getting a, a you know so much uplift underneath them. I hate it when I see their markets going crazy because when that happens, it, it puts a wobbly wheel on how people feel about you know, the booms that are happening in other areas because we get concerned about property bubbles, etc. Now, two things on that. The RBA have made comments about growth they see and the need that they – or what they need to see before they'll be interested in raising interest rates. And what they're more worried about is not house growth. They want to see 
wage growth. Mm. They need to see wage growth before they want to be a, well before they will consider changing the interest rates. So that's comforting for property mm. investors, mm. and they think there's still years until yeah. they'll hit those triggers. Yeah. On the other side, the the housing bubble conversation, uh, the bosses of the CBA, and I'm hearing this comments come out across multiple platforms, but they're not too worried about a uh, risk of a housing bubble because, like you said, Trip, most of the buyers are homeowners. This is not a speculative market with investors throwing money around, and it's you know it's not that easy to get the money. So this is a you know quite kind of a um, conservative boom, even though it's broad based. Mm. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And then you come out that's just flying under the radar is, you know, all that um, the negativity between Australia and China and all the tariffs and um, the Chinese stop and the, you know, I think we go through the barley, the wine, the lobsters, whatever that was, I think it equated to $2 billion a year. Um, that's been absorbed by other countries. Mm. Uh, the media hasn't come out and said that. Yeah, okay. So that that's um, you know potentially was a concern concern for Australia and still probably has some some concern, but it's been absorbed by other countries. The you know and credit to part of the government and and for those industries for quickly quickly pivoting. Um, so that helps just the bigger macro confidence um, and the liquidity in the market. Um, lots and lots of layers. Lots this, of layers for this boom to. Um, to continue. Mate, um, I, I just think there's so many layers we haven't even factored in yet. If you go to that big layer, if you go to the biggest layer, the amount of people that will want to get into Australia, the amount of, you know, high net wealth, uh, you know, individuals that want to migrate into Australia when this thing, when the borders do open up, yeah. I, I don't think we'll ever see, well, I don't think we've ever come close to seeing the demand that I think is already building up for people that want to get into Australia, yeah. you know, a, an yeah. island country, a great banking system, a great healthcare system, yeah. you know, there's yeah. just so many layers. Yeah, that, you know, I'll, I'll just mention the Chinese again, there's been some propaganda about the negativity of Australia. Um, apparently the, the Chinese students uh, are lined up like never before trying to come in to go to universities. Universities are creating more space, putting on, you know, creating new universities that didn't typically take uh, the overseas student are, are looking to how can we provide a service to these. Um, so there's a wave about to arrive, um, you know, and that'll be the same for the international migrants mm. coming in. Um, so that's just going to continue to uh, flow through the market. Um, and then you talk about what you've we discussed this morning at breakfast, um, you know, the government's stimulus around pushing to the region. Blows me away. Yeah. You know, let, listen, let, tell the listeners about that. Well, mate, we, we sit here and we're, we're, we're always been very pro the big regional markets. Gordy and I have been focused on it for 30 years. I know you've yeah. got a love for the regional yeah. markets. As much as we've got a healthy respect for all of the cities and we've infiltrated certain postcodes in yeah. Sydney and all over the place, right? Well, but mate, the, you know, just to... Quickly, from my perspective, is that um, it's negative cash flow in the big cities. I, I've Typically. just, I've never, couldn't understand that. No, um, that's why I've never invested in those. Yeah, yeah mate, yeah. the blue chip suburbs and that kind of, you know, you get a bit of ego, um, you know, a bit of an ego attachment, and there's certainly. Uh, historically, there's been investors if they're strong enough as a you know as an individual, if they earn big enough yeah, incomes they big, and they can yeah. put up with that negative Which cash flow, yeah. hey, they look like yeah. rock stars. Yeah, you know, you yeah. know, you get twenty years down the track and you're holding a couple of units in Bondi or wherever they sure. may be, sure. hey, you look like a rock star. But geez, you can you know if yeah. you haven't got the if you're not staunch and you <laughs> and you don't have that cash flow, yeah. man, it can it can really it can really put a wobbly wheel on a lot of things, relationships, lifestyle, a whole range of stuff. Sure. Where we've gone, why would we do that? You know, yeah. we've always kind we might of, look like rock stars, but not mate, necessarily yeah, you that can cash look that yeah. way, particularly you, buddy. <laughs> but <laughs> the reality is that uh, as we see investors test the numbers and get out of their own road and really look at the markets that you know we've had a big passion mm. for for years. Those key regional markets, not the little country towns and the, you know, out the back in the bush, you know what I mean? Or the mining um, speculators. Mi yeah, yeah, not yeah. chasing the mine dollars, you know. Yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone, you know, was up in arms when I was telling everyone not to go near the mining towns. Everyone thought I was crazy that I wasn't advising people to go and buy in those mining regions, but I knew there was too much risk attached to it. We've found a real safe, high-productive, high-performance 
you know, sweet spot in the market, which is those key regionals, the ones with the big airports, the hospitals, that big infrastructure, and it's paying off in truckloads now. The investors that have been following, you know, my thoughts and our work in the last, you know, sort of 15 years particularly, they've got hundreds and hundreds of properties in these markets. Now, our concern at the moment is that the stock's exhausted, right? You can't buy a property, you can't buy a property, a block of land unless you've got really strong relationships which we lean on every day um and uh you know renters cannot find a property to rent and i thought that may pull back the focus on the regionals and maybe because i don't know how they're going to handle this shortage of properties i don't know there's so many families that cannot secure a rental property at the moment it is a crisis um already and it's going to be i think a uh, historic level crisis by the second half of 2021 mm. uh, and I truly believe that and that even though it's a landlord's market it makes me very concerned for the renters but in, in the face of all of that the federal government is now funding uh, a 4.6 million dollar campaign promoting the regional market starting any day now mm. and targeting 20 percent of the people that live in Sydney and Melbourne, 20% of those people in Sydney and Melbourne with the goal of encouraging them to move out of those two markets and move into the regional market. Yeah, so, yeah. man, this flow into the regionals, it's only just starting. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think it's a spectacular time for the regional markets. Yeah. Well, we've been saying for you, that's what we've, uh, you know, the, it's what we've been um, believing in um, for the, more than a decade, I guess, but uh, it's obviously all accelerated and... Um, well, you're buying properties at half the price. Yeah, yeah. you get double the yield. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You can yeah. have a mixture of you can have this orchard of property all yeah. z- all over Australia rather than being stuck in one cycle, whether it's on or it's off, and it's you're waking up going, oh, what's the market doing? We've always had portfolios where we know that something's growing and something. You know, there's always yeah. a nice yeah. mix of things. So you got all that. So you, if we're going to talk regional, let's talk. Um, well, Brisbane's not regional, but um, the amount of infrastructure going into southeast Queensland. Um, you know, billions and billions of dollars across River Rail, the the Queen's Wharf, the um, the new uh, entertainment centre. Um, billions, billions, billions and billions. Billions and billions of dollars. And then you potentially throw um, affordability, good yield, lifestyle, you know, Brisbane's becoming a destination. So, Mate, the, the standout thing in that is that, uh, you know, really there's been two major players in the Australian property market being Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. Now there's going to be a third player. It's never going to be, in my That's opinion, a good way to look at it's, it. yeah, it's yeah. not going to be a, um, a Sydney or Melbourne. I don't see that, but by gosh, they're going to give it a challenge over the next twenty years. I reckon. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, um, the, yeah. the appeal, uh, the the Olympics will be a trump card on top of that if they get that, and I believe they haven't yeah. even got anyone else contending for it at the yeah. moment. And you talk about it not being a regional, but uh, the thing to point out to the listeners as well is when we look at Brisbane, we don't think just Brisbane City. Yeah. What we think is. Greater Brisbane, those hubs around it. There are, you know, secondary cities outside of the Brisbane area that are, for me, some of the most exciting regional hubs in Australia right now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we treat them as regionals. We don't treat them as a, a city. We don't really even, you know, it's a funny one. Brisbane and South East Queensland is a market that's like no other, really. Mm. It's a big footprint. Yeah, yeah. So all in all, our energy, um, I guess, coming back to our topic, is um, how long is the boom going to last? Again, you know, I'm of the opinion we've, we've got years to come, um, you know, so... So there's a couple of things on that. Sorry, I'm jumping all over no, this no, conversation, but you can see that I'm just pretty pumped about this whole, yeah. you know, talking point. Uh, other announcements that are coming out, not just about this focus of moving people out of Sydney and into the regionals. Now, if 20%, even if 10% of those people decided to move out... Those numbers, whilst they are significant at a Sydney level, they're big numbers to be spilling into a regional area. That's overwhelming numbers, right? Now, as listings come on, it'll create more listings because more people in Sydney at the moment, a lot of people in Sydney aren't able to list their property because they can't sell their property because they've got a risk of going, well, where would we we buy, right? Where can I buy? So as these listings come on, I think it'll create more listings. 
when there's more listings than buyers, that flattens and softens the market. So I think in the years ahead, and I think we're approaching about a five-year period, and I think mostly of Sydney, uh, Melbourne is a very hard animal to read because they are so pro-property in Melbourne. It's an unusual market. But Sydney, I think, is, uh, for me, an obvious one that we should see sideways, um, you know, sort of uh, growth in the Sydney market, a flattening of the Sydney market, a softening of those market conditions – I never see that market as being at threat of a, a bubble and a bust because it's just so easy for the Australian government to turn the tap on, let in some wealthy you know, uh, international uh, migration into Australia. And, of course, then if you turn it on too far, the market goes too crazy again. But if they can get that balance right, I think it's safe. But what I do think we're going to see is over the next five years, Sydney soften, probably Melbourne as well, and then this big push get even more significant into these regional markets. What do you think about that idea, Gordy? I think that's um, a great, great point. Um, but what I, I really get excited for, you know, our investors who can see the bigger picture. Think a lot. You talk about Melbourne and Sydney, and why people kind of think they're the the leaders is because they talk about median house price all the time. So it's always a big number. But it's, it's not just about the price you're paying for something. Everything's relative. So you go into Sydney and you've got to buy, you know, you've got to spend $1.5 million to get into the market. You think, yeah, that's great. And say that goes up 10% over a period of time. You go, yeah, it's awesome. But you take that same $1.5 million and go into another market where, you know, and we've proven it. We've gone back and looked over history and looked at capital growth. There's very little difference in the actual percentage growth over a period of time. Most but of those key regional markets will take the Pepsi challenge with a Sydney suburb any day of the week, any right? Any day of the week. But, but what we've got to do is you've got to combine that with the, the yield that you get. Because most property investors are, are using someone else's money, borrowing money for it, you've got to balance that off, trade that off. And when you add in the yield you get on something, it's, 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 it's no contest. No, I you don't know, believe it's, so. It's no, no contest at all. And, you know, I think at the moment for investors, well, you tell me, what, 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 what's, the, what's the biggest um, fear, I guess, investors have? Well, typically it would be that I buy a property that I can't find a tenant. tenant. Exactly. And what I, I mean, and we've proven in the markets that we go into, that hasn't been an issue. No. Hasn't been an issue at all. I can't remember. So right at talking. the moment, well, I think about what Trent just said. You know, I can remember you and I talking probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago in Australia that, you know, we, we, at that time we were about 48,000 homes undersupply. Mm-hmm. Trent's now talking that we're up to 100, 150 homes undersupply. Well, the latest report out this week is their forecast from the Domain, an article in Domain, 178,000. Wow. 178,000 yeah. houses undersupplied. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah. yeah. It, you know, the, the you know, from an investor's point of view, it's just never been a safer time mm. to have a property. And just know, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's... The time's not, not to... Yeah. I guess for the investor, don't procrastinate. You know, don't, don't procrastinate, but don't, don't get caught. Don't get caught up in the rush, but, mm. um, you know, don't procrastinate. Always be investing like we have. We, mm. if, if, if we've got the money and it's time and our portfolio allows for it, we're investing. We're getting in the market. When's um, the best time to buy a property? Yesterday. Oh, a year ago. <laughs> well, <laughs> 20 yeah, years whenever, ago. Whenever the bank will lend you the <laughs> we'll money. We'll give you the money, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, one topic, one, one thing that comes up in all of that, if we bring all that together, of course, we've got a strong belief that the regional markets are going to continue to run. There's lots of evidence now and plenty rolling out at a, you know, at a uh, national level that um, yeah, while Sydney and Melbourne are performing very strongly, if you really take the time to do the research, there's plenty of evidence there that as more listings come on, you know, about half of the people over 55 have expressed interest in selling properties. They believe two and a half million homes could be listed for sale out of Sydney and yeah, Melbourne right. over the next five years. Two yeah. and a half million homes. Mm. Now, that's stupid numbers, right? So you don't have to do a lot of research to realise that Sydney and Melbourne could flatten out quite considerably over the next five years. The government, you know, they proved through COVID they're not going to let the Australian property market collapse. You know, they'll top things up, they'll turn the immigration tap on, they'll do what they can to support those Sydney and Melbourne markets. But what is, I think, almost guaranteed is in the flow of everything that's happening... Those key regional markets, my gosh, they are positioned 
for an incredible opportunity over the next five years. And I think between now and the end of the 2020s, I don't think there's a better time I've ever seen to build wealth through property in Australia. Any last thoughts I, on that, guys? Well, I'm, I disagree with you. I, I, I can't remember another time that would be as, as good as it is now. Every, every, every aspect of it has come together. Yeah. You know, it's not just, it's not great yields at the moment, but, you know, the, the vacancy rate's up a little bit. You know, it's, it's not yields are up, and, and, but interest rates are up at the same time. We've got yields up and interest rates low. You know, we've got capital growth moving, we've got rents moving. Everything everything has just come together in a, you know, coin of phrase, a perfect storm. It is a perfect storm. And then if you flip it over to the other side and the buyer, the acquisition, putting that deal together, mate, you cannot walk into those environments and not be prepared. Mm. No, no, that's right. Well, mate, as an investor, to get into the into where we want you to invest, you can't do it without, without us. No. Just mate, be, you just work... Just to be frank. Just you be you frank work stuff. so hard, and I see you come yeah. up with something, and you mentioned 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it may be, and that's using every friendship, every relationship, every trick in the yeah. book to get hold of that right property, but the clock is ticking. From the second they say, OK, Trent, you've got access to this... Yeah. Mate, yeah. the investor needs to be buyer ready. They need to know they got the can get the finance. They need to be mindset ready. They need to know what entity they're going to purchase in. So the big message is yeah. get ready as quick as possible, yeah. and then put a team around you that can help you get access mm. to that stock. That's it. Yeah. All right, listeners. Great to uh, connect again, and thanks for joining me, boys. We'll Good be one. back again Pleasure. very soon with another great topic. Thanks, Phil. But thanks, Gorda. Good seeing you. Thanks, Fred. Cheers. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and also feel free to leave me a question. I look forward to helping as many property investors as possible. Take care and we'll talk soon.